hello there, student. Do you happen to know what this symbol means? Oh, yeah, I've seen that one before. Um, doesn't it mean that you, you flip over, you, you put it in the denominator? No! Sorry about that extra bit of drama there. Today, as I want to talk to you about the uh, inverses of functions, there is a problem. This is something that you think you know what it is, but it is wrong. Your gut will lead you astray. It will take you down the wrong path. This is not what you think it is. Inverses are very, very, inappropriately written like the symbol on the left. And that is not, 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 not the same as the reciprocal, which is written on the right. This is history's fault. This is, the Euler invented some very nice symbols. It's very nice to have function notation, but they are crazy not good here that the same symbol that you are used to writing when you want to say that three to the negative one, oh, well, that's right. There, your instinct is right. That means flip it over and write a third, yes. But if this, what is written right here is a function, then no, 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 no. It means the inverse of the function. So, mental checklist. If you ever see a negative one exponent, is it on a function? Is it on a function? If so, it means inverse. If it's on a number, it means reciprocal. I'm sorry, this is, this is not the way that I wish it was. If we could come up with new symbols, we totally should. I'm not in charge of that, sorry. What we're gonna do is we're gonna practice making the inverses of some different functions. Now, the inverses themselves, many a time, will not actually be functions, but we're gonna go ahead and do it anyway for the purposes of example here. Finding out which ones are and which ones aren't functions. I'll mention that here, but a large part of that will be in your classwork. So if we look at this set of points, we've got a bunch of letters, A through J in the first quadrant, uh, put it, giving us a bunch of points. Inverses is when you swap X and Y. So if we look at this point uh, A, we can see that A is over there at 1 comma 2. So the inverse of A is going to be at 2 comma 1. That's where inverse A is going to be. And then look at B, it's at 2, 3. So at 3, 2, we're going to have the inverse of B. Skipping around a bit, I see that E is at 5, 2. So at 2, 5, I will have the inverse of E. Oh, right next to it there, I see I is at 1, 7. So at 7, 1, I will have the inverse of I. And then where is J? It is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 over, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 up. 7 comma 7. Where's the inverse of that going to be? It's right there at the exact same spot. It didn't move. So what's going on here? How do we find the inverse? Swapping X and Y is a sort of broad statement that we're switching the input for the output and vice versa. But we can see graphically this equates to a reflection over the line y equals x. This is a, a mirroring image that happens here and we can do it with functions as well, not just with points. Now, when we look at example two in the textbook, we see the way that he describes that we can do it in our calculator is not something that we're going to get into till later. I'm gonna go over example two with you algebraically, but when I get out the calculator, I'm gonna switch the way that I'm doing it. Don't ask to explain parametric mode, that'll come later. 
For now, we're just going to use this as a tool to help us be able to graph the inverse of anything. Okay? So don't ask. When we look at this function here, here's our standard function notation, f of x equals something in terms of x. Where is y? If I say swap x and y, we don't have a y to begin with. Well, remember, we graph the output in place of uh, f of x. We graph the y's based off of what, the value, what values f of x produces. So what this is saying is 1 half x squared plus 2 is equal to y. So the procedure for finding the inverse that you should be long familiar with means to swap x and y. This is replacing every y with an x and every x with a y. So now we're trying to get another function, another time where y is alone, so we can see what the inverse function looks like. So we subtract 2 from both sides, and we multiply both sides by 2. 2x minus 4 equals y squared. How do I get y by itself? It's squared right now. That's right, I take the square root. But, 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 if I take the square root, then I must be sure to include what symbol? Yes, the plus or minus symbol. When you take the square root, you must supply plus and minus. So, the question then becomes, how do we put this in our calculator? This can certainly be a long-winded place for us to put into y1 in our calculator the square root of 2x minus 4, and then in y2 we can put negative square root 2x minus 4. You could, you could even be a little bit crafty and say y2 is equal to negative y1. But there's a more general way that we can swap x and y. So I'm going to show you how to do this in the calculator, but we're not going to explain every facet of how this works. Okay? So what you do is you get out your handy dandy TI and you're going to, hold on a second here, you're going to want to press the mode button. Mode is what will get us into some choices here for things that we're going to do throughout this year. And the one that you want is down here and it's called PAR. Stands for parametric. Who cares? We're just going to do that. We're going to find parametric mode and we're going to go and we're going to press the Y equals button. And now it's all gotten crazy. Whoa. We're not going to have to understand everything that's happening here. What you're going to do every single time is you're going to press the x t theta n button for x. And it'll make a t. That's weird. Don't fret. Just do it. And every time we're going to do that. Then in the y, we're going to put in our equation. So in this case, they told us to do 0.5 x squared. And I know I pressed x, but a t came out. It happens. Uh, plus 2. So now, uh, if I press zoom standard, I get the graph uh, that they wanted me to do. But they also said that they wanted me to limit the domain. So I press window, and I'm going to make my t values, which t is standing in for x here, they said they wanted it to go from negative 2 to 4. And a step of 0.1 is fine. So now my graph looks like they want me to have it do in example 2. So in order to find the inverse, remember we said the definition of the inverse is to swap x and y. So all I'm going to do is go down to the next set here. This was equations 1 and 2. Now I'm going to come in here and in equations 1, x and y. Now in equation 2, x and y. I'm going to do the exact same thing except I'm going to swap what's in x for what's in y and I'm going to swap what's in y for x. So I'm doing the exact same thing but I'm putting it in the other spot. x and y crisscrossed and swapped places. So 
Now I graph that, and lo and behold, there's the inverse, the reflection across the line y equals x. You can see from the graph here that the, the function does not, the inverse uh, relation does not have one output for every input. So right here at x equals 3, looks like there's two different uh, y values going on. So that's going to disqualify this as a function. How could I have been able to tell if something is a function, if its inverse is going to be a function beforehand? How can we know if something is invertible? Well, like we said, when we have a function, we want every input to have one and only one output. We can see here that every uh, x has got one and only one y, but every y doesn't have one and only one x. This 5 in the y here on the right, in the range, points to two different x's. So I know numerically that when I flip this over and make the inverse out of it, that at that spot, at 5, I'm going to have two different values. So this is not going to invert. Something has to be what is called one-to-one. -one. Every x has a unique y, every y has a unique x. These are the functions that are going to be invertible. So say hello to our friend again, this one that you've seen before. Hello. This time, let's see if we can figure out how we're going to make the inverse of this weird asymmetrical function. You've seen it before. Try, pause the video, and try to sketch on your own piece of paper what you think the inverse of this will look like. All right, we're back, and we're going to try thinking about this point right here. Okay, so that's at negative 2, oops, that's at negative 2, 0, which is going to map to 0, negative 2, and it was connecting to negative 1, 1, so that would connect to 1, negative 1, 1, negative 1, and those connect. And then the point after that that it went to is down there at 0, negative 1. So that's going to map on to negative 1, 0. Can you see how this is, this is going? Then the next place that that connected to after that was here at 1, 2. So now we need to connect this to 2, 1. And the last place on our weird little square root looking radical graph was at 4, 2. So we go up to 2, 4. So the inverse looks like that. All right, so this has been a pretty rapid fire lesson. You should bring to class the, uh, you should do the reading in the book first, and then you should do the review problems Q3 through Q10 and problem number four for the book. That is your homework to bring with you on a sheet of paper to class, and we will keep working on inverses together. Thanks.